As a small business owner, time is your most valuable resource. That's why in today's video, we're exploring some of the best ways to make the most productive, efficient use of your time in order to see the biggest, fastest results, because the shorter amount of time something takes in your business, often the less expensive it is for you, the less resources it requires. So time management is really not just a critical skill, it's also essential if you are bootstrapping and growing your own business without any external funding. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Christina Scalera, and if we haven't met yet, I am here to help you grow and run a self-managed business, which is basically kind of like a passive income business, but you know, one that manages itself. I don't really like the word passive income because I think it's a little misleading, but self-managed is definitely something that you can do no matter who you are or what kind of business you run. So that's what we talk about here on this channel is how to create that self-managed business and the wealth that comes from it and what to do with that wealth once it is in your hands. As someone who has ADHD and runs my own business, there's a lot that I've had to learn about productivity. The first thing that I learned pretty early on is that I had to learn how to prioritize my tasks. And this seems really obvious until you look at how you're actually prioritizing them. So for example, when I first started, I used to feel really overwhelmed because I would write down, you know, my three things a day, a helpful exercise, no doubt for anyone. And this is what I also have my clients do. However, when I started, I would write down, like my three things would look something like write online course, record online course, edit and post online course. Like those would be my three things. Just for some perspective, it takes me about one week per each module of creating an online course to get it like everything written, recorded, edited, uploaded. And I was trying to do an entire course in one day. Like that didn't make any sense. It wasn't until I was staring at my friend Becca at the Happy Ever Crafter. She's got a great YouTube channel all about calligraphy, but I was staring at her planner at her house in Ontario. And I saw that she had just one thing written like for the whole week. It was like she had to finish a sign for a client because she does calligraphy and wedding signs and things like that. And I was like, wait, that's your to-do list? And she's like, well, I also have to, I think it was like post a YouTube video this Thursday. That was it. That was her whole to-do list for the week. Now, Becca is someone who is incredibly hardworking. She has an amazing business and she's built quite a reputation for herself on Instagram and YouTube and beyond. So this is someone who is very, very successful by any standard and her to-do list that week looked like two things, two very impactful things, right? Delivery on a client project and a YouTube video that would reach hundreds of thousands of people over time. It was just those two things. And that was my big aha moment. All the moments that I'd spent in therapy crying because I felt overwhelmed and I couldn't get anything done and I was so far behind. It made me realize that I wasn't actually behind. I was putting too much on my plate every single day. So then I started to create more realistic priority lists, more realistic to-do lists. And that's when things really started to shift and change in my business because no longer was I trying to get everything done as quickly as possible. I was just trying to get whatever I could done in the next couple of days. It was a much more chill approach. It helped to reduce a lot of stress and anxiety. And the ironic part is in the end, I ended up getting a lot more done than I would have in my old habits of just trying to cram everything in as much and as fast as possible. Once you have your priority list, once you have those three things every single day that you can be working towards, and by the way, I like to set mine out the night before when it's fresh on my brain what I wanna be working on for the next day, not the morning of so that I have to think of what I actually have to do that day. It's just a little nice thing to wake up and have that dictated to me what I need to be working on that day, what the most important three things are. And sometimes those three things look like go for a hike, have this therapy session with my therapist, whatever. So it doesn't always have to be all three business related tasks, although usually they are just because I do run my own business. All right, so number two, the second step, if you wanna have a really productive week is to eliminate distractions. So now that you're working on that priority list every single day, when you're getting in there and you're going through each of the things, making sure that they're getting done, 
the first thing that you need to be successful is to make sure that you don't have any distractions on your plate when you are accomplishing or going through those list items. I've set my laptop to permanent do not disturb mode because if I'm gonna go into email and check my email, that is my choice. It's not a constant flurry of notifications across the right side of my screen, letting me know that some new something is happening. If I am really in a good flow state, I will go ahead and turn my phone off or into airplane mode or just put it on do not disturb. Like right now, as I'm recording this video, it's in do not disturb mode so that I don't get interrupted with like a phone call or you know anything else that could pull me out of this like YouTube mode <laughs> that I'm in right now. It's such a small thing, but it makes a huge difference. Another thing I've noticed makes a big difference in staying focused is pulling whatever I'm working on out of all of those 72 tabs that you have open so that it creates a new window. So I use Chrome and all I have to do is drag that out and then I have a brand new win fresh window with everything that is only related to that task. So that helps me to focus as well. And then when I need to put that down and pick it back up later, I have that whole window collapse and can just reopen without getting distracted by online shopping or some other related task that isn't quite, you know, something I need to do just yet. You know, those procrastination type tasks that you like to take up your mind. On the days when I feel like I'm having a really hard time focusing no matter what, I will go ahead and use a modified version of the Pomodoro method. So if you wanna see what the Pomodoro method is, it's very popular. It's all over the internet, you can look it up. But what I will say that works a little bit better for me, and I don't know if it's like my female brain or ADHD or just like, I don't know, this is just helpful in general is, I think the Pomodoro method is a little too intense for someone like me. And so what I do is I set a timer for five or 10 minutes, no more than that. And I say, whatever I can get done in these five minutes, these 10 minutes, that's all I'm gonna do. And what ends up happening 90% of the time, sometimes it's just like not happening, but 90% of the time I end up wanting to keep working past the timer. So I'll turn the timer off. Thank you, timer. You've served your purpose. Put that to the side and keep working on the task at hand. And I often find that I get pretty close to completing it. Honestly, my favorite timer to use is just my Google Home where I will tell it to set a you know five or 10 minute timer. But a lot of people also like, there's like these little cubes that you can get on Amazon or whatever that you can set the timer and it glows and turns different colors. And there's lots of really fun little timers you can do like that. But personally, I just think saying it out loud having it get set for me and then it just like goes off and I can tell it to shut up or whatever. That is my preference. Okay, so this next one is the secret to life. This is literally the biggest secret to anyone successful that you see, which is strategy number four, automate as much as you can. It is such a pain in the butt, like such a pain in the butt to just sit down and set up some kind of automation, especially, you know, like if you're transferring money to pay off bills or into your retirement accounts or whatever, it's annoying. It is so annoying to get this set up, but I can promise you that if you do just one of these every single day or even one per week for the next, you know, whatever, however many of weeks it takes you to get this done, you will notice such an improvement in your life when you have those panicked moments thinking, oh my God, I forgot to pay the water bill. And you log on and it's been paid flawlessly. Everything is automated. Everything is fine. Your water's not getting shut off. So if you have ever had those moments of panic or if you just want your life to run a little bit more easy so that you're just checking on things and not spending a ton of time paying bills or transferring money, this is, this is the key. And when it comes to automations, what I've found as a recovering shopaholic and someone with OCD and just like generally not good at checking up with these things is that this is going to make the biggest difference in a positive way to your finances. So think about that. If you automatically set up a credit card payment, like every single month, that card that has just like a ton of money on it that you need to pay down, if you're automatically paying $25 out of your checking account every single week and you're not using that card anymore, you shredded it, whatever. That's what I had to do for some of my cards. I found that that was getting paid off so well. Like I would not 
remember it. And then I would log in a couple months later and, you know, I only had a few hundred dollars left to pay off where before I had a couple thousand. So this is such a key technique to building wealth because you can do it not just for paying credit cards off and improving your credit score, but you can also do it in the other way where you're saving money. So even if it's just $5 a week, that's how I got started. I started investing $5 a week in a Roth IRA. That is so critical. After a couple of weeks, you have around a hundred bucks in there. And after several years, maybe you've increased it, you've gotten used to the automation, you've bumped it up a little bit here and there, you're gonna have a fully funded Roth IRA every single year without even thinking about it or missing that money. So this is a really critical step to take if that kind of saving is available to you. And even if you feel like it's impossible, this is actually something that I wish I had prioritized sooner because everyone told me like, pay your credit card bills off. It's so important, do that first. It's, you know, you're wasting money on the interest rate. But what I found with automating my financial savings into this Roth IRA was that it gave me the confidence to know that I was actually capable of holding on to money. So I wish I had prioritized that earlier. If you're like me and you have trouble, this might be something that helps you along the way just to feel more comfortable having and holding money in your bank account and just seeing it there week after week. And then for everything else in your life, all the bills, all the payments, all the contractors, whatever it is that you are paying for on a monthly or regular basis, automating everything is going to take so much work off your plate and put much more time back on your calendar that you can use for like fun things. Maybe going hiking or skiing or whatever, just reading a book, whatever you want to do if the outdoors is not your thing. My mother-in-law is like not into the outdoors and uh, just breaks my heart because I love it so much. <laughs> okay, so the fifth and final one is the most important thing to do if you want to be productive in your business. And this is literally the only reason <laughs> I am able to have a business or enjoy the things and the lifestyle that I have today. And this strategy is to delegate as much as possible. I know it's expensive. I know it's a pain in the butt to hire. I know that sometimes hires screw things up and you have to go back in after them and fix it. But I can promise you after doing this for many, many years, Someone out there is very, very happy to have the position that you've hired them for. And even if they mess a couple things up or it isn't quite right, right from the start, which it never is, you can work with them more closely to see, you know, what went wrong. It was there miscommunication. Could something have been done better or more according to your standards? And people are generally pretty easy to work with when you're giving them constructive feedback. So this is a nice relationship that can really lay the foundation for you to completely step away from your business and have that self-managed business that I was talking about at the beginning of today's video. There is nothing like the feeling of, you know, when you're sick in bed and you're like, how is this going to happen? And you log on to Slack and you see that things are being done and accomplished and getting checked off without you in there constantly micromanaging everything. So if you find that something is just a task that you do not look forward to, or you're not very good at, or it's just not very time efficient. Like for me, that was graphic design when I first started. There was no Canva, it was all Photoshop, and it took me six hours, six hours, to figure out how to open Photoshop, just to open it. I had no idea how to actually get the program open. There was no YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> because like that's such a dumb question <laughs> honestly it was so dumb that nobody could answer it so nobody had a video graphic design was not something that was a good use of my time i could have been out there selling and making money but instead i was spending 30 or 40 hours a week just creating the graphics for my blogs and social media and all that stuff so just by delegating that i got a full life. I got a full 40 hours of work back every week that I no longer had to spend designing very poorly, very, very poorly made graphics. <laughs> so start looking for those tasks that are the most time consuming. See if you can delegate some of those and then try to get the other tasks around like things you just don't like doing. Try to get those off your plate and then you can start to delegate even some of the tasks that you enjoy doing that aren't hard, that don't take a lot of time for you, just to make sure that you get to only work on them when you want to and not when you have to. If you've made it this far, make sure you're subscribed to this video. Give it a little thumbs up. 
because I would love to hear from you and know what your favorite productivity hack was today that I went over, what kind of strategies you'll be implementing, and if you have anything interesting or exciting to add that I could maybe share in future videos. Don't worry, I'll give you credit. By implementing these productivity hacks, you're gonna be able to maximize your time and outputs in your business. If you've ever heard the phrase, work smarter, not harder, this is exactly what we're talking about here. Maximizing how much you can actually get out there and into the world with less effort. And if you're still watching this, you seem like someone who's interested in the success of your business. So there's a video that just popped up onto your screen that talks about the best investments that I've made in my business and a little bit of advice for past me. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, make sure you click the video that just popped up onto your screen and I'll see you there. Have a great week. I'll see you soon.